Uh, my name is Lauren Isfendidi, and my topic looked into the history of jazz in Queensland. So I've got an interest in this topic because um, I'm a cultural heritage researcher and uh, music is my specialty. I've spent a bit of time in the jazz community in Brisbane as a performer and um, there's a lot of wisdom and um, musical knowledge that's stored in our, um, our older players. The history of jazz in Queensland is, is quite long uh, and it does start from the 1920s where you have bands getting together uh, to play for dancers, not actually jazz per se, uh, but from there um, we started to develop the kinds of music that we're more used to thinking about as jazz. Especially um, in the 1940s and 50s, um, American troops were stationed in Brisbane and also in North Queensland. So they brought with them records and they brought with them their instruments. So their bands came with them. Um, and, you know, great American uh, swing musicians and their bands uh, came and toured Australia, you know, notably Artie Shaw, um, and, you know, did multiple concerts in Brisbane City Hall, which were fabulously attended. It was the popular music of the day. Uh, so musicians, audiences, and venues were all part of uh, a network, a community of people um, bringing jazz alive. And it did happen all over Queensland, but as soon as we got Elvis and the Beatles, there started to be a new way for people to consume music, um, especially through records, through um, radio, through television. Um, however, um, jazz moved through um, the television circuit, and that's quite an interesting story as well, uh, that live bands were playing uh, in the studios. Um, they were also doing um, live radio broadcasts, so um, the ABC has um, a long history of uh, recording jazz live and, and broadcasting it. And there are some really great recordings of Brisbane musicians um, and musicians from around Queensland uh, coming into studios and, and those broadcasts can still be found. So I went about this project in a couple of different ways. Um, a lot of it meant that I had to get out in the community and I had to speak to people. And I'm still speaking to people. There are actually quite a lot of people um, who have a lot of stories to tell. Part of finding people for this project was reaching out through jazz clubs. And in Queensland, there are quite a number of jazz clubs. Another way I reached out to find people was through a postcard system. So um, I designed postcards that allowed people to um, write me a story on the back and then just post it free of charge. And sometimes people have very short stories, but that meant that jazz was still an important part of their life. They thought to write it down, they thought to write to me. So it was important to them, which means it should be important to us. Another thing that's really interesting is the different kinds of venues that hosted jazz. Um, sometimes there were um, small cafes like the Primitive, which was in Brisbane City. I was working with the Queensland Jazz Archive collection in the John Oxley Library. And that collection is small. Um, it covers a couple of things from quite early on. So there are some great photographs from the 30s and 40s there. And it also covers a few things later. So there are 80s, 90s and 2000s material in there. There are a couple of key pieces um, that led me on my journey, that guided me. Um, a couple uh, photographs from Cloudland. Of course, Cloudland is one of um, Queensland's most famous uh, venues, um, perhaps because of its untimely demise, um, but it hosted an awful lot of jazz music. And there are some terrific photos of the interior and exterior of Cloudland, and also of the people who uh, frequented. Also in the collection are a series of oral histories and some, some music, some great music that's been recorded and archived. And um, some of those people have now passed away. So they're incredibly important documents for us to look at to get a sense of the heritage of jazz in Queensland. And through my project, I hoped to expand on that. So the oral histories that I record should sit alongside those and be complementary so we can get a fuller picture of what went on. If anyone's thinking about applying for a John Oxley Library Fellowship, I highly encourage them to think strategically about their ideas, think about how their ideas might fit into the collection and how they might be able to contribute to the greater community by bringing that knowledge together. I'd also say to them that 
it's a wonderful opportunity to spend a concentrated amount of time on a project to take advantage of the knowledge that's here at the State Library and to work in a connected way between the knowledge that exists and the knowledge that you can bring.